This is a smart ring. It's a fitness tracking ring. This particular one is size 9, which is interior measurements of 19 millimeters. Um, and so it has some markings on the back. It says JEO Pro. And it says there's compatible software. The JEO Pro software it says it's compatible with Android 5 and above, and then Apple iOS 10.6 or later. Um, and it has a few other specifications in here, a 4 gram weight. The chip, it says, is a Dialog DA14531. There's a heart rate sensor, um, has some storage capacity, and a polymer battery. And it uses magnetic charging. So I was sent this to review for free. If you wanted to purchase one, it would cost you $40. They haven't paid me for my review, and my opinions remain my own. Inside the sleeve was a little white box I had to pry open. It has some instructions here, and there's English there, and it has the smart ring right there, um, but it's gold colored, and there is some definite circuitry wrapped around the inside of the ring, and there's a little magnetic port that it looks like it's going to have something attached to to charge it. So it comes with this little proprietary charging cable, um, which basically just has a magnetic ring and pin set up to a USB-A plug, um, and so that guy will snap in there to charge this. Um, and that is the sole contents of the box, so essentially you get a ring, a charging cable that you'd better not lose, and the instruction booklet. So reading the manual, it says it will take 60 minutes to charge. Um, the light's red until it's charged, and then it turns green when it's completed charging. There's a package you can get with an optional charging box, although my package just has the cable here. Um, there's also an important thing about wearing the ring, is you can't just put it on anywhere. There's the charging um, port, and on one side of the charging port is the battery, and on the other side is the electronics. And they say you want to have these sensors right here on the bottom of your finger. So essentially, you want those sensors to be facing the bottom of your finger for your heart rate monitor to work. So the rest of the instruction manual is about installing the JU Pro app and how to use the app. Um, there's one interesting feature is that you can have a remote camera shutter um, feature so that when you wave the ring, it'll take a picture with your camera. All right, we're installing the JU Pro Fitness Tracker. It's from uh, Keypray Pid Dev. All right. So even without logging in, it's detected and connected to the smart ring, and it says that it needs a device update. There's a little red dot there, so I can click on that. And it is going to um, download the firmware and then upgrade to the next version. I hit the device check button. The latest firmware is V186 update. So I was at 184 and is downloading and updating to V186. So I've been wearing this ring for about 12 hours now, and I have not done um, 5,000 steps today. According to this watch, I've done 1,600 steps, which sounds about right to me so far. I did do a lot of driving, um, and so it might be that the ring is detecting my steering wheel motion. Although this watch is also doing steering wheel motion, it might just be very optimistic. Um, the step count yesterday seemed much more in line with my actual step count. Um, from a sleep detector perspective, it didn't detect when I went to sleep. It actually tagged me about sleeping about two hours after I started sleeping. And then it has some periods of deep sleep and light sleep. And when I woke up is approximately correct. Um, so let's test out the heart rate. And I'm going to be making sure that I put the little light sensor near the fleshy part of the finger here. And it will occasionally do this on its own. But to trigger it, you push the start button. And when it's doing that, there's this flashing light. Let me move that a little bit there. So it's, there's the flashing light. Um, and we're going to compare it against another system. So this guy here says 71, 72 beats per minute. This guy says 70 beats per minute. So they're in agreement with my beats per minute. Now I'm going to do the blood oxygen level. Um, so this guy here says 98. This guy's still reading. The 98% um, was from its last reading. Let's let it go through.
All right, so again, it came back at 98%. And so the, the beats per minute, all right, so it came out at 98%. So the beats per minute and the um, specific oxygen or percentage dissolved oxygen seems to be pretty accurate, at least compared to another monitor. So comfort-wise, it's a ring. It's a little bit wider than some other rings I wear, but it's not uncomfortably wide. Um, it's maybe a little bit thicker than other rings, but again, it's, it's not at all uncomfortable. Um, I slept with it last night and, you know, it, it's no worse than sleeping with any other ring. Um, you know, I, I like that obviously a lot better than wearing a, a band and sleeping in bed with a band. So if you're the type of person who doesn't wear a fitness monitor in bed because it's a big clunky band, the ring might do something for you there. Now, I do recommend they have this automatic, automatic heart rate test. It's turned off by default, but if you turn it on, I do recommend you set a start and end time to not include when you're in bed because the, the green light that flashes here, if it's in the dark, you can definitely see that and that might wake you up. Um, you know, so you can play with that on your own, but I'd, I'd say try it out with it turned off initially. Now, if you don't turn on the automatic heart rate test, I'm not sure how frequently or if ever it does the heart rate detection unless you actually push the button in the app. So I think you have to push the button in the app for it to go. So, you know, here it's not doing anything. I hit the start button and it starts flashing the light to detect heart rate. Now, this app does not seem to connect to the Google Fit ecosystem. That might be because I have an older version of Android on the phone, um, but it seems to be mostly self-contained in the app. There is a way you can log in, which I believe will allow it to save data to the cloud, but I am not logged in and it's just saving all the data and it seems to be, um, you know, it seems to be keeping track of things and you know showing all the stuff here so it seems to work okay without logging in so there's a few hidden displays that aren't obvious but if you click in the bottom area here it'll kind of say hey look here's the data i've collected from wednesday and thursday um and it's kind of you can go back and say okay 2,000 steps wednesday is purportedly 5,000 steps thursday um it has an estimate of distance which is not accurate it's based on the step count um estimate of calories and duration and so forth now also in the sleep area you can look at you know previous nights if you have data for previous nights you can also look at week and month averages if you've collected enough data so under the me tab there's also the user's manual link and if you click on this manual button it's basically a copy of the paper user's manual that came with the ring there's also an faq um, which has some commonly asked questions one of the answers is it's waterproof to level of five atmospheres um, and then they also have a thing that says hey if it's not running in the background and can't collect data, here's how you can give the app permissions to run in the background using various phone systems. All right, so I did not fully charge this when I first got it, um, but so far the charge level has not gone up or down with about you know 12 to 18 hours of use. So I am going to charge this all the way up and then I'm gonna wear it for a week and I'll report back in a week. So when the ring is on the charger, there's a little lightning bolt icon that appears inside the battery here. All right, we have a green light. This thing says battery's fully charged. And so I'm gonna start wearing this guy and we'll see how long it lasts under real world situations. Okay, I've been wearing this ring continuously for 11 days. Um, this morning it said it was at 43% battery, and now it said 11%, now it's jumped down to 10%, and I get a little pop-up that said, hey, battery is low, confirm. So I'm going to say that about 10 to 11 days of continuous runtime um, is the battery life on this ring. Now that is with the automatic heart rate test set to every 15 minutes from 7 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. So if you took this down to every 60 minutes or turned it off entirely, you'd probably get more battery life because it wouldn't be doing those heart rate tests every 15 minutes. Uh, but if you're going to wear this ring, you might as well do the heart rate test as frequently as possible, I figure. Um, and, you know, every 10 days charging this thing once a week, that's not really an onerous requirement. Um, so I think it has plenty of battery life for what it's doing. All right, this guy fully charged in a little less than two hours and it drew so little current so slowly that my meter didn't even trigger. The meter was basically considering it not drawing any power because it was such a low number. So here is a GPS log with kind of my running speed, which is 10 minute miles, except I'm kayaking around the lake. 
Um, so I kayaked 1.4 miles around the lake. And I got 2,000 steps worth of credit for kayaking, which makes sense since I was paddling the paddle pretty hard. I have been wearing this fitness tracker ring for about 12 days now. It has about a 10 to 11 day battery life, so I've worn it all the way down until it gave me the low battery warning, charged it back up. Um, comments about it. It has the blood oxygen sensor and the heart rate sensor, and those guys appear to be just as accurate as one of those little clip arm finger blood oxygen and pulse oximeter type sensors. So those work just fine. Um, it has a step counter, which bases off of the acceleration, kind of the accelerometer data of your hands moving. And that guy I've found exaggerates immensely. It's like a 3x to 4x more steps than this watch tells me I have. Um, and it's obviously more, so much more that I, I don't, I can't believe it even though it'd be nice to say I'm getting 6,000 steps. Um, so you can set your step count higher. So if you set your step count to be three or four times higher than you know, what you get with a pedometer, it's a reasonable metric for kind of relative one day versus the previous day, you know, how many steps did I get each of these days. Um, so it gives you a kind of an activity estimate. I wouldn't necessarily say it's an accurate step counter. Um, I think the kind of most interesting thing about this is sleep monitoring is that this is small enough, you know, you can wear it at night without, you know, it's, I mean, some people wear watches in bed. That's fine for them. I wouldn't do that. Um, you know, but you can easily wear this to sleep and it can track your sleep patterns. And I'm not going to say it does a super accurate job. It generally gets the wake up and fall asleep times relatively close. It usually takes 15 minutes to 30 minutes after I think I've fallen asleep to really start saying, okay, this is when you fell asleep. Um, and it will sometimes say, well, it'll sometimes say, you know, okay, here's light sleep, here's heavy sleep uh, or deep sleep. And I have no way to know if that is an accurate man measurement or not. Um, there are a few times I've gotten up in the middle of the night and it said, hey, you're awake at this time, and it's gotten that correct a couple of times. But it's also gotten a few places where it didn't get it correct. So like right here, I was not awake that entire period at night. Um, I don't even think I woke up at all in that period at night. So I was basically maybe just restlessly sleeping, but very restlessly sleeping at that period. Um, so it gives you an idea of your sleep and kind of relative day to day, it can be useful to say things like, oh, well, look, it, it says I got a lot more sleep this time than that time. Um, but I'm not going to say it's medically accurate for that. Um, it gives you interesting data, and as a comparison, you know, one day to the next, I think it would be kind of useful to say, well, you know, you know, that kind of jives with what I've gotten. It gives you some hours and time limits. And, you know, so I, I know I slept more than four hours and 15 minutes that particular night. So it says here I went to sleep at 1230, and I know I went to sleep, you know, at least a half hour before that, if not, 45 minutes before that. Um, you know, so sometimes these counts are not necessarily perfectly accurate, but it does seem to have some correlation to reality. Um, so I am not logged in. Everything is stored on the device, and that's fine. It seems to store the data just, just fine. Um, so the device itself, I think, is made from a metal. I'm not sure if it's gold or just some gold-colored metal. It's very thin. It's in a ring. And then it's inside of that, they have a circuit board with, like, um, clear plastic resin. Um, so it's kind of a casting resin inside there. So obviously no user serviceable parts. Um, I've worn it for about 12 days and it's developed a few tiny little scratches so the, the finish is not quite as, as glossy, shiny as it was before. Um, it's kind of wearing like you would expect a ring to wear. Um, it may actually be gold in a super thin layer here. I don't know. It certainly hasn't tarnished or, or you know, discolored with, with anything. Um, but, you know, as a ring, it's perfectly fine. A little bit wider, just a tiny bit thicker than, you know, a lot of small rings. But I've seen people wear rings a lot bigger than this, too, with, with no problems. Um, and the price is relatively small for what you're getting here. Um, so I would say if you're thinking about getting a 
tracking ring, kind of a health tracking ring, but you're not sure about spending large amounts of money for it, this guy might be a way to try it out for a month or two. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not, I, I feel like it's a, a, a fair value for the price, even given the fact that it may or may not be 100% super accurate. Now, if this software was from a big name manufacturer, I would say, well, they're just working out the bugs and you can expect the software to get better because everything about the accuracy could be fixed with software fixes. And there was an update to the firmware of the ring when I first installed it. However, I'm not sure I can guarantee that. I think, you know, you just have to judge based on the software that you have, um, assume that's what you're going to get because I, I don't know if they're going to be improving it at all over time. So just to give you a run through of kind of how this works, you got your main screen with the steps and they also calculate calories and distance and duration. Um, and really, if, if you click anywhere here, you can get a daily log of what's been going on. Um, and really, I think this is useful to see how's my activity scattered about through the day um, and kind of what's the relative step counts between days. Um, and you can see that, you know, most of my days here are relatively consistent except the very first day when I put it on later in the day. Um, you know, and I am pretty consistently getting credit for about 10 to 14, 12, 11,000 steps. Um, I would say in reality, that's closer to 2,500 to 3,000 steps, knowing how many steps I do with other step counters. Um, so I, I say it's over overstating my activity by quite a bit, I'd say three to four times, but it seems to be accurate from day to day as a relative measurement. Um, and you know, there's some graphing you can do over time if you keep up with it a lot. Um, that has the sleep thing and it does a reasonable job detecting when you go to sleep. It might wait a while of non-activity before it triggers saying, oh, you've gone to sleep. So you might've gone to sleep a little bit before that. It seems to do a pretty good job when you get up to say, okay, you're moving around, not, you're not asleep anymore. Um, and you know, you can, go and kind of look back to different days and see, you know, how you slept. And it has this idea of a deep sleep versus a light sleep based on how much you're tossing and turning, I assume. Um, I have no way to know if that's accurate or not, but it does make some distinctions there. Um, and I do have a few places where I did get up in the middle of the night and it detected that. And then I also had a few places where I don't actually think I got up, um, you know, it, it was maybe just a super light sleep where I was rolling around or something. So the difference between when you're awake and when you're asleep, I think is relatively accurate. I don't know about the light versus deep sleep. So the heart rate, um, you know, hit the start button and it starts detecting your heart rate and it can be set to do this automatically like every 15 minutes. And you can get these nice little graphs, you know, your heart rate on different parts of the day as, you, as it goes through. Um, and you can also kind of get your average heart rate for a week or a month um, as it goes through. And so, you know, it, it, that's just as accurate as a pulse oximeter. And then the blood oxygen sensing is about as accurate as my pulse oximeter. Um, and it does not ever take the, the, the blood oxygen on its own. You have to trigger that. So you'll see most of these days, I have two, maybe three triggers to detect the blood oxygen level. Um, so as a very portable pulse oximeter, if you're gonna have your phone with you anyway, this guy's a lot easier to carry around if you're running or exercising than a pulse oximeter. Um, but you do need your phone with you to read that.